Did you realize that the economic model for restaurants, as well as their scheduling, has changed since the pandemic? And that it could lead to opportunities for you with your client appreciation events, as well as your educational and lead generation opportunities? Let's take a look. This is The Rare Advisor, proud to be a part of the Advisor Advancement Network and home of a business model supercharged by recurring and repeatable events. Your host is Mike Walters, CEO of USA Financial. He is an investment advisor representative of and securities are offered through USA Financial Securities, member of FINRA SFPC, a registered investment advisor. So in the previous edition of The Rare Advisor, we spoke to the fact that clients are living alone at a much greater rate than they have in the past. And that is in many ways leading to loneliness being an issue. Now, keep in mind, uh, living alone and being lonely are not the same thing. You can easily live alone and not be lonely. You can live with people and be lonely. However, there obviously can be a correlation to living alone and in fact, being lonely. And it is becoming an issue in the United States. And it's especially becoming an issue with your older clientele. And generally speaking, in the world of financial services, if you are a comprehensive financial advisor, as you likely are, if you're paying attention to this channel, uh, the fact is that your clientele are aging, your clientele are probably uh, in the ages 50, 60, 70, 80 range, because that's simply where the largest percentage of wealth is in the United States. Now, I spoke to this concept before, but just a brief touching on this in case you didn't see the previous video. This yellow line is showing the amount of alone time that people are having as they age. So this is uh, right in here is when their children are in their life. So in the ages 30 to 40 range, you can see that they spend a lot of time with family and children and spouse. And then here is where spouses start to outlive each other. We see that quick nosedive. Here's where we retire and we're not spending time with our coworkers. And we start to not spend as much time with friends either during that period. And we spend as not as much time with our children as we age as well. So all of these factors are, are increasing the likelihood that you need to help assist as a financial advisor in the lifestyle component of your clients. Now, we talk all the time about comprehensive financial advice is more about lifestyle than it is about the dollars and the cents. This is part of that conversation. I mean, look at these bubbles here. This is the bubble growth of loneliness of being alone as you go through time and you age. So I will encourage you do things to support or eliminate, is probably a better way to say it, to eliminate loneliness out of your client's life. You will create an adherence to them that is an unbreakable bond that goes beyond the, the numerics of the plan. I know many of you are already doing a fabulous job with your clientele, engaging them in so many different ways and helping them improve their lifestyle. But this is a role that that is, is, in my opinion anyway, to be filled in part by financial advisor, in part by friend who is the financial advisor, in part by coach who is the financial advisor, and simply applying love to your clientele. Now, I had a good friend, just as an example. Unfortunately, he passed a number of years ago, but he was a fabulous financial advisor. And he took great lengths to try to, uh, uh, to try to expel loneliness from his clientele. Now, he especially would focus on the widows and the widowers, knowing that there was a void in their life that had previously been filled with the life of another. So, for example, with his uh, widow clients, his females who had lost uh, who had lost a spouse, he would always remember them on Valentine's Day. He had flowers delivered to their home on Valentine's Day because likely they weren't getting that anymore, and he wanted them to have that brightness in their home. Very simple process took basically no time out of his schedule, but meant a lot to the recipient. Uh, and he would do other things on you know anniversaries. 
uh, when, uh, when there was no one to celebrate that anniversary with anymore. But he would acknowledge things and remember things. Uh, and he did it in an uplifting manner. And it was just a really nice thing. And then what happened is he started to run events around those things. So he would run a Valentine's Day event. And the only people who were invited were widows. And it was an amazingly powerful event for him. It was just a client appreciation activity. And, and the reason I bring all that up is because when doing the right thing to help people who are alone and becoming lonely crosses paths with an economic opportunity, you have to take advantage of that, right? So this is just a study that identifies the fact that restaurants are not open as late or as often as they used to be. Part of it's because of the, the lag and the hangover from the pandemic. Part of it's because of lack of employees. Part of it's because they've re-identified their margins in when they were basically losing money on certain days and have kind of negated the, the, the issue, which used to be a loss leader issue in restaurants where you had to be open on certain days in case somebody wanted to come. Because if they came and you weren't open, then on the days that would normally be popular, they might not think to come. So it was kind of that catch-22, if you will. And I'm not a restaurateur, so I, I'm not speaking from direct firsthand experience in that world. But it seems that they've kind of changed the game there. So this study, and I know you can't see all that, uh, this is out of uh, Data Essential Cent is the name who uh, who. Uh, calculated all this, but the percentage of U.S. restaurants open and, and their study was on a typical Wednesday night at different times has dropped compared to 2019 before the pandemic to now. So now they're telling us in the eight o'clock hour, less than 70% of, of restaurants on a Wednesday night are open. In the nine o'clock hour, less than half of restaurants on a Wednesday night are open. So if you're looking to run events, client appreciation, lead generation, education, whatever it might be, if you're looking to run events, you should, in theory, be able to cut better deals at these facilities because you're filling a void for them that is currently not profitable. In fact, they're just absolutely shut down. So it's not like you're going to dislodge anything out of their normal business. It's all gravy for them. So you can negotiate some pretty unique opportunities in running these events. And other days of the week might even be more uh, more substantial than a Wednesday. Uh, I would imagine Mondays and Tuesdays are not overly popular either. Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, obviously it's a different ball game. But if you're looking at Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday for running events, odds are there's a good chance you might be able to get some really good deals and do some really good things for people who are important to you inside of your practice. This information is for licensed financial professionals only and is not intended for use in soliciting sales from the public. The views expressed represent the opinions of the presenter or their featured guest, not necessarily those of USA Financial or its affiliated subsidiaries. Industry references are generic and not intended to represent actions or beliefs of any individual or entity. Content is only presented to illustrate general principles, beliefs, or ideas and should not be construed as legal or regulatory advice. Trademark and copyright protected. USA Financial and Affiliates.